Hey, what's up? Football fans, listeners, readers, we greatly appreciate you making your way to golongtd.com. This is Go Long with Dunn and Monas, and we are remote. I'm here at Fatty, uh, Orchard Park, New York, drinking a little Juice Bomb Northeastern IPA from Sloop Brewing. Jim, you're at the homestead, sneaking in a pod while the uh, little one naps like, like the trooper that you are. A world hey, you, many you, of our listeners can relate to, I think. I think so, too. I think it's what's been fun about this whole pod because we're both going through it together. So, you know, whenever we get a <laughs> chance, we got to get it in. But I am jealous right now because you know how much I'd love to be at Fatty with you right now. Because I got to say, the one thing I love about Fatty, too, the they have beers from, like, places in New York I've never even heard of. Cities, towns, yeah. like breweries. And I'm just like – and I, I had a great hazy IPA last week, so – well, I'm glad you gave a little shout out there. I want to make sure I do that when I'm drinking those. You know what? This is kind of a weird comparison. Whenever I'm at Fatty and I'm working my way through like, you know, their IPAs or their sours or their seasonals, it reminds me of those uh, tax funded, of course, we pay for them. Those New York State commercials where they're like <laughs> telling you like the five different places that you should visit. I'm like, what the hell? Climber, New York? There's that in Climber? Or I mean, towns I've never heard of outside of like... It's crazy. I love it. Um, same, same. I mean, I don't love it because we pay for it. Do we really need those? Probably not. But anyways, it's just, you know, places you didn't know existed. S- ski resorts you didn't know existed. It's a good time. Not only not only can you hydrate at Fatty, you also learn your geographical New York state that you might not think you know. I mean, you just get to educate yourself. Yeah. You get to hydrate everything at Fatty. You really do. I'm trying to find. Oh yeah, oh, this, like where this, the is act- actually, this is Hampton, New Hampshire. So, kind of a that d- d- doesn't make our point there, but it's a great. No, beer it does. Honest. It does. I don't it, New York, wherever. I I love just hearing about new places. That's always been like the scout in me when I'm traveling and driving all over the place. Like I love when I've heard of like I never heard of something, and you get a beer like that. Got to check it out. I'm kind of breaking this news to you right now, Jim, because our lives are so chaotic. We haven't had a chance to discuss, Uh, but live podcast Saturday, 6 p.m. with our good buddy, Paul Daner, perhaps Jay Morrison as well with The Athletic. They're going to be in town. Haven't even really talked to Chris and uh, Nick quite yet, but we're going to set up probably right here at the Orchard Park location. For a, for a little shindig, live podcast, Bills fans, Bengal fans, come on out. Um, I'll put out, you know, a, a post at golongtd.com here soon with all the logistics, all the details. I mean, that's, I was just texting Paul like minutes ago, figuring this out, but I think we're going to make it happen. So if you want to like clear your schedule right now, join us for some beers, talk some football, maybe get some blood and guts, maybe get some Golong gear, maybe a subscription. We'll be at Fatty. That's an easy decision for me. I like that one, Tyler. All right, man. So let me hear it. I, I've been waiting. We haven't really spoke. This All right. A, yeah, we have it. We didn't really text during the game. We haven't. No, we it was a, that's busy. This. I was explaining. I think we're both busy on those days where family, entertainment, a lot going on. And also, thank you to uh, everybody for joining the chat. Within the Substack app, that was a lot. That was cool. We, I love that question a lot of too. That I, there. That you sent me. Yeah. I don't think anybody in their right minds expected what we saw at Highmark Stadium, and we're obviously going to start there with Buffalo and Miami. This is the AFC podcast. NFC podcast will be its own episode. But I mean, we we were right here with Jay Skursky of the Buffalo News. I thought Jay put it so perfectly. It's not really a matter of if they beat Miami, but how do they look when they beat Miami? And if that's the bar, if that's how you're kind of judging the Buffalo Bills, you got to be extremely concerned. (laughs) That didn't look like a Super Bowl team to me. I get it. You don't make apologies for playoff wins. You never should. They won. They escaped. Every game is its own entity. At the same time, and we're going to get into it, a lot of the problems that have kind of been – you know, I got you know, festering beneath the surface. They've kind of been there, but they haven't really cost Buffalo. Almost all came back to cost Buffalo against Skylar Thompson and an offense that couldn't even get in and out of the huddle. It's not even like, hey, 
give give the Dolphins credit. Like they they went in there to win a football game, and yeah, everybody thought they were going to lose. They didn't play like a team that thought they were going to lose. At the same time, I wasn't really impressed with Miami. I mean, it wasn't like Skylar Thompson went out there and was lighting it up, and Jeff Wilson's running over people, and Tyreek Hill's leaving people. The, the Miami didn't play that well. I mean, all the delay of games, all the timeouts. I mean, just elementary mistakes that would be inexcusable in a JV football game, let alone the AFC playoffs, which kind of speaks to how disappointing of a performance this was for the Bills. Uh, to almost lose that kind of game. And old Josh kind of shows up here and there. Some awful drops. The defense coming up short and some big-time spots where do you want to start Jim because I don't I don't think there's you know the Bills fans that listen to our podcast I don't think they're tuning in to you know celebrate a win I mean you should it's a playoff win enjoy it but the overwhelming sentiment is concern right now in western New York because this it it was Super Bowl or bust for this team don't take it from us take it from a guy like Taiwan Jones a captain on the team who used those words if it's Super Bowl or bust they were dangerously, dangerously close to bust in a game that they should not have. No, and not not the way it started either. I mean, it looked like it looked like wow, they are. This is playoff Bills. This is a mismatch. Blah blah blah. What I'm taking away from this game, I'm putting myself in the Bills building back in there. I'm so happy we won. Right, we're advanced. Here we go. Let's prepare. Week to week league, all the all the cliches we talk about. He can't play like that. Josh Allen cannot play like that. Simple as that. I'm not going to overanalyze this any more than that. He's better than that. We've seen him be better than this. Those now, I don't think all those interceptions were his fault either. I thought that right. one was an outstanding play uh, by Miami. The tip uh, on th- to Beasley on that little, you know, he he just jumped in front. I thought he tipped that. I did not think that was Josh Allen's fault. The other interception that Z- uh, Howard made, that was world-class. I mean, that was a world-class interception. So I don't think you panic yet. I'm not in, I'm not panicked with Buffalo at all, like at all. Like I, I'm, t- I'm just going to tell you now, I fully expect them to beat Cincinnati. I'm just going to say it right now. But he, Josh Allen, can't play. I mean, those mistakes can't happen. The fumble bothered me the most. That bothered I mean- me the most. I know it's one play, but these games are decided by one play. If you're Tyler, playing anybody other than Miami, Miami agree, any yeah. quarterback other than Skylar Thompson, that mistake, that play I alone costs agree. you the game and costs you your season. And it's inexcusable. I mean, for somebody that's as talented as Josh Allen. Agree. Uh, it's that simple. It really is. I'm with you, man. I'm not – I'm with you on this. Like, I am not – I. I you know, I'm pro Bills. I love, I really love this whole team. Like I just told you, I feel good about this game against Cincinnati this week. But I'm also saying that, that Josh Allen is going to be Josh Allen again. Those mistakes can't happen. The fumbles cannot, that, I just can't get that out of my, I mean, I think that's it, Tyler. I'm with you on the drops. There are some things they're going to have to clean up, but I think every team goes through that, right? right. Every team is nitpicking right now. I mean, we'll get into Cincinnati in a second, but just think about this. If Josh Allen just clean it up on the fumbles, I think the Bills can just let's get back to it here. You know, let's get let's get back to what we do. I mean, I think it's just Josh Allen. I'm good with it. I'm okay with that because I believe in him. I believe in him so much, just like the Bills do. I think he comes out. I think it's going to be a clean game against Cincy. I think he's going to be clean. It's a conversation, though, that we shouldn't be having right now. I mean, if there's one player that nobody should be concerned about in the middle of January, it's Josh Allen. It's your MVP yeah. candidate. I mean, when we were talking with Jay, and I kind of mentioned, look, there's there we're still seeing some signs. It's old Josh is still in there, and he kind of bubbles to the surface at some inopportune time. Jay kind of disagreed, right? He's like, oh, he's good. He's fine. You know, and these, these games are decided by two or three plays, and – this is, God, it's boomer bust in the fact that, hey, I love I love the Bills just like you. This offense is explosive. If Allen's healthy, if Diggs is healthy, they're liable to score any given play. What, it, I, I think that they clearly can still win the Super Bowl. And by God, if Tamar Hamlin is running out of that tunnel against Cincinnati, 
I, I don't I can't even imagine the emotional no. lift the team gets. At the same time, Josh Allen had 16 incomplete passes, which in today's game is a lot. He had the two interceptions. You know, you just detailed how those happened. Not completely on him, but two picks, seven sacks, Jim. And the fumble that was returned for a touchdown, it was very out of rhythm, out of sorts. You know, this is an offense that, to Kurt Warner's point, on needing to take your layups this time of year and just, you know, a short to in- intermediate game being what really sustains an offense with three, four playoff wins in a row, they- they've proven they can do it in 2020 and 2021. They were clicking last year at this time. Like, I- it, was a- it was a runaway freight train of an offense. Mm-hmm. Right now, it just seems really all or nothing. It seems like they get the big play or everything's just kind of chaotic. And that's a dangerous way to live against good football teams. Agree again. No, Tyler, I think it's all well said, all points that need to be heard, taken. Hard to believe we are having this conversation because they were such a machine last year. I feel like we always said machine. Like that word kept coming out of our mouth. That offense was a machine. Right now, I agree. They're fighting right now to at least – at least like get those drives that we're used to. I think you made a great, great point. And, and two things you've been on Josh Allen a little bit with the inaccuracies all year. And I kind of was always like, yeah, okay. Okay. But you're right. I mean, it's enough sample size now to your point. You've seen this and been on this where Josh Allen has to play better accuracy, decision-making strange, but that's on Josh right now. Like that to me is a problem. The bills would like to have like, Give me that problem because I believe because they everybody believes in that he will get back to what we know he's capable of. The secondary is about to get tested. We don't even know because that was some garbage to your point. Skylar Thompson, unbelievable effort, but that wasn't he's not a he's not a threat. Skylar Thompson's not beating you. I mean, they were dropping balls. They weren't even helping Skylar Thompson. Right, early. they weren't helping him out. They were not helping him early, and and that's disappointing, especially Waddle. That was surprising. But um, anyway, the 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 Bills are about to get like we know we're going to transition to the Bengals. But this secondary, I'm still, I'm still seeing some things with Trey White that he he's going to need that he's not Trey White yet. And with Allen, it's not even the um, – I mean, he isn't as accurate as he was mm-hmm. the last couple of seasons, but it's more of the the just drive-killing, game-killing yeah. mistakes. Yes. He had three fumbles, right? He only lost the one that was returned for a touchdown, but he, <laughs> he fumbled two other times as well. It just doesn't fly against good teams, opportunistic teams. Last night, Cincinnati-Baltimore was decided by one play. One play. Tyler That's Huntley go, goes for goes for the goal, reaching over the end line, and but, uh, right. I mean, Logan just, Wilson forces the fumble. Sam Hubbard's off to the races, ninety eight yards. That, that that is the game, right? If they just but, score there, they go up by a touchdown. Cincinnati's offense, it was God, well, it was hard for them to really get into any rhythm against Baltimore's defense. Those, those AFC North games are like that, but that's that's my point. It's like maybe not even the accuracy over the co- course of four quarters but he has been prone to have just an absolute crushing mistake and they've been able to get by and win a lot of games because of who they've been playing chiefs bengals that's the bar it's not gonna fly for these teams agree can't play like that i mean i really I'm, i'll just keep saying it you're right i'm just believe i just believe he won't because but hey, he does have that. that other element. I mean, he he can just gun it sixty yards downfield to Stephon Diggs when you go at single time, high at any time. I mean, even that that Dawson Knox catch was I don't even know what to say about it. But even the throw itself yeah. was off. You know, I don't even know. I still don't even know how he made the throw or the catch really. But you made an interesting transition a little bit if we go to the Bengals because to your point, think about Cincy right now, like. Now that defense is well, like we talked about last week that we knew since he was going to be in for a huge fight with Baltimore because um, that defense is real. But I mean, they literally were a fluke type of play away from being, you know, so don't you think they're going back right now a little bit like, 
man, that was a backup quarterback too. I mean, that's a backup quarterback. And I'm sorry, in the playoffs, you shouldn't a backup shouldn't be beating you. Shouldn't be beating you. I mean, shame on us. Shame on everybody for thinking that the Bills and the Bengals would just steamroll the Dolphins and the Ravens. Uh-huh. I really didn't even think they were these were gonna be games. I did with Baltimore. You did. That defense did. is too good. That the division defense, it's too much. Like that game had a fight written all over it to me. Yeah. But they I'm won. Shocked by the Bills. And now they play shocked. each other. And you're, yeah, to your point, I think the Bengals are watching that Bills game thinking, yeah, we're not terrified of this Bills team. But then the Bills are watching the Bengals game thinking, we can hang with that team. I don't know what to expect. I think the home field advantage is huge. And since he's got to be a little pissed off, you know, that was the one element of the whole neutral, neutral site and AFC championship resolution that kind of gets lost. I, I mean, if, if since he would have beat Buffalo in that game, they would have hosted this playoff game. Tyler. And it's, it's Tyler. It may, it makes I, you want to give the edge to Buffalo in this. I mean, home field I, is, is huge for a Sean agreed. McDermott team as, as Jay noted. I mean, they're undefeated at home. Having one on the road in the playoffs, that place is going to be rocking. I can't tell you how much I'm, you know, Mario keep saying it, but yes, I think the Bills win. I think this is absolutely a professional hard pill to swallow for Cincinnati. I, I can't imagine what they're going through right now. It's just not fair. It's rare, unique. All of it is just, it's still the best outcome of everything because DeMar Hamlin's okay. But that's that's the only outcome that matters. But yes, professionally, it hurts. It hurts to know what it means. To, you, you know, we're going to see, you know, we live here, so we're about to see this, you know, this city alive. Like, you know. I want to get city, into the game and yeah. the matchup. Um, and, and I definitely want to get into Baltimore, Cincinnati. But first, on, yeah. on Buffalo, Miami, any specific plays, any specific players, uh, good or bad, that, that stand out from that game? You mentioned the secondary, Trey White. That's going to be a spot that Cincinnati is going to look to exploit. We, we saw it there at Paycor Stadium. It. Joe Burrow, is, is he's going to go after, your, go after your weak link, whichever team, whichever defense. And he was no going doubt. after Tredavious White early in that game. We have to. Um, that's you have to, he has to prove it again. Buffalo. Yeah. Trey White has to prove he is capable, you know, of what they're asking him to do. Now, Buffalo, I'm sure I'm not I'm not studying it close enough to know how they're using Trey White compared to the previous years, but I'm sure there has to be some type of help given with him right now. A little more, especially with <laughs> who's coming to town. Jamar Chase. I don't even, I mean, we already know he's. He's arguably – I mean, he and Diggs, you could argue that all day, which one you're taking, but those two are special. They're unstoppable right now. Man, the home field advantage is huge. But if it's you huge. just look look at these two teams and the lineups and the quarterbacks and the matchups, I would probably skew Cincinnati because I think Baltimore's defense just played out of, out of its mind. You know, they, No doubt. They, they did such a great job at making Joe Burrow work for everything. Everything. I don't think the Bills are going to make Joe Burrow work for everything. There's going to be big plays to be had down the field with Higgins, with Chase, with Hurst, with Boyd. Because this bit, I mean, the Bills secondary, they've, they've kind of been hanging on now. This is where you also miss Von Miller. You know, no he, he, he makes that problem go away. I mean, he, he is. Literally closed games, closed wins for Buffalo, and he's not there. But there's some, there's something about the Bills at home, and it's hard to quantify. Debar Hamlin. I mean, I, th- I think they they must the Bills must have listened to our podcast and took our advice <laughs> that if you're going to unleash this emotional, like spiritual, um, momentum shifted specimen onto the field. Just unleash him out of the world. Save it for Cincinnati. I can't imagine. This is exactly how the NFL scripted it. <laughs> After he survives, obviously. Thank God. Um, 
But that's gonna be on that's gonna be an unbelievable scene. I don't know how it transfers to the action. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to pick against Buffalo. Given everything that we're saying here with the matchups with with Burrow, you know, I, I think the Burrow's game is more conducive to a Super Bowl run than Allen. He's not going to screw up. He's he, he's going to take advantage of, take advantage of your mistakes. I mean, Allen was missing receivers down the field. He, he wasn't even seeing I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I know not everybody watches this, but I'm like nodding with you right now. I'm not. Yeah. I don't want to say anything because I think you're nailing this right now. Like I really do. I agree with you. Like, yeah. There's just. I, <laughs> I I have a hard time picking against the Buffalo I'm in the this same game. Way. Tyler, <laughs> really I'm not it. even thinking about it. I'm 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 good with the Bills this week. Yeah, I'm good. I put it in today. I put it in as soon as I could. Did you really? Good. I fully expect Money where Josh, your mouth is. I always do. That's my favorite. To be honest, Tyler, it's one of my favorite things about gambling because a lot of people can just say stuff sometimes but you know what there is something to be said and and you dabble you dabble but you do put your money where your mouth is and it's fun like i respect that i respect that yeah i've got tampa tonight we'll see how that plays out yeah we're opposite on that but you know what you also i i had the chargers and i didn't know if i could ever recover from that one that hurt but luckily the giants came through but anyway i want to get back to that this Bengals game like, I mean, and to think, just think about how the Bengals and Bills, the emotions they're about to go through again for this mm-hmm. game, together again. We know what's going to go down in, in that stadium. I'm already thinking about the winner of that game <laughs> has to play the Chiefs. How do you get up? How can they emotionally, physically? Easy now. Keep- they got to deal with the Jags first. Anyway, it's going to be – like, I, this game is – is unfortunately, it could be a Super Bowl. I mean, these are two Super Bowl-quality teams, Bengals-Bills. Is there a – so you're watching Cincinnati-Baltimore. What concerned you with the Bengals? We've been really quick to uh, – I, Drop them up as here's what I'll unstoppable say: unstoppable force that go along, guilty as charged. Love yeah. the Bengals, offensively, defensively, but Tyler Huntley had them on the ropes at the Agreed. one yard line. Agreed. In all of his glory, what concerns you? That's a concern. That's first and foremost because that Josh Allen is, you know, he's more Lamar Jackson, you know, than Huntley is Lamar Jackson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the real deal now. And I would be concerned with that. And where are you at with the Bengals as far as, I don't know, if, and this is to your point, I don't know, can Buffalo stop Joe Mixon? I think that is a big part of, I think if you can kind of get Cincy into a pass-only team, not that that's a – I'm not saying that's good, but I, I think they become an absolute nightmare if Mixon's on. Like, the way they came out against the Bills that first drive and made it look so easy, uh, running and passing, we need to see one or the other. We need to see the Bills slow down one or the other, you know, to, to, to say that they're at least in tune with something because the small sample we had of that Bengals game, it didn't look like the Bills had an answer. I'm going, to, I'm going to mention a very polarizing name here in Western New York, and um, we it hasn't come up on this podcast nearly enough this season. But Tremaine Edmonds, now I know he had the big hit, but if you actually ISO on Tremaine Edmonds during the course of a Buffalo Bills football game, he leaves a lot to be desired. It, he's built like the ideal pro Everything. football linebacker, right? Tall, strong, big, fast. I was talking to somebody with the Arizona Cardinals, and who's the linebacker they drafted a couple years ago? Was it Zavin? Golden? Xavier Golden? No. No, that's way back. I don't remember. Yeah, you're thinking of Marcus Golden. Let me just. Marcus Golden. There was a Xavier Gooden. Xavier. Oh, yeah. um, Zavin Collins. 
Collins. So they they took Zayvon Collins in the mold of Tremaine Edmonds, what I was told. Like they they saw See, what right. the Bills did, trading up for this guy, tall, rangy, big, fast, covers. But but you actually watch him, he's out of position so often. I mean, he he is so responsible for big plays that cost that defense. And go back and look at some of Miami's bigger plays. He just – was it the, the little screen to Salvin Ahmed? I think that was one where he should have made the play, just couldn't break it down. That's going to be an area for Cincinnati to exploit. The, exploit they will exploit, whether it's with Mixon in the run game, I mean, because he kind of gets lost in the traffic, Edmonds does, yeah. whether it's even in the pass game. I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't think that if you're Buffalo, you're going to pay that guy. Not, not, not what he wants. Not what somebody else is going to give him. Somebody else is going to give Tremaine Edmonds a lot more money than Buffalo will be willing to give him, my opinion. That's interesting. I'm with you on that. Um, I mean, Milano is as... a star. Milano is an all-pro stud yes. who affects the game in every possible way. Right? So he benefits from that. Yeah, when he's kind of isoed and he has to make a play. Too often- he, he just – he plays so hard. And one thing he does do, that delay – when he has like – kind of a delayed blitz where he's not he's not sure like he's giving that quarterback like I'm not sure if I'm dropping or not his ability to snap and go on that blitz is like it's it's incredible like, he does some things that are, are seriously like r- not rare but his speed and length covering ground yeah but to your point I see what you're saying I do see misses I don't know I think the Bills need to try to find a way to keep them in a win-win situation for the Bills. And if and if, if there's somebody that comes in too much money, you have to, you know, you pick your breaking point if you're the Bills. Like what you're not going to go past. It's it is there are there are a lot of prospects at different positions where like you've got everything you'd want at the combine, the size, the speed, the agility. Yet on the field, I'm not yeah. saying he's a bad player. No, he's no, a no. good starter. He's he's worthy of being on the field. He'll make a play here and there. But it, he just leaves a lot to be desired. You expect more when somebody possesses the skill set That's fair. that he has. I think it's a sign that the Bills haven't done it, you know. Right, they haven't done anything yet. They did something with another guy playing next to him. Which, that's starting to look like a bargain. <laughs> At the time, it seemed like a lot of money. Man, that was a really good move by Brandon Bean to pay up. You know, that was right after Travis Kelsey kind of lit him up in that AFC Championship game. That's a tough and they still paid him. Right, but... So that, that, that's just a smart move to not overreact to, a, to one moment in time. Because uh, I don't know if I would have. That's why I'm sitting here. I'm not a general manager. I would assume, you know, Sean was in Carolina with Keekley and uh, Thomas Davis and those guys. and. He Milano is in that category for Sean as far as the value, you know, it, that's pretty impressive. So, all right, Bengals, Bills, we're going to get into that more later in the week, as referenced. Jacksonville just pulled off the third greatest comeback in this playoff still- history, I think the fourth greatest ever, 27 to nothing. And then, you know, that touchdown right before halftime, that's it's, – it's, it's those little moments, those, those drives where it's – that's where these, these comebacks happen. That's where games are won. Like, in 30, 40 seconds, they made quick work of half the field, got down there, scored, had a little momentum, got a stop, and turned it on. You're watching this, Jim. I mean, what – is it – was that game more about the Jacksonville Jaguars comeback or the LA Chargers utter collapse? Utter collapse. And guess Brandon what? Staley. Brandon Staley. And guess what? I didn't see the second half. Turned it off, went to bed. Here's why. Here's why. Well, there's one major reason. I'm exhausted. We all know we have kids. Two, I bet Chargers money big. Really excited. Didn't want to see it because to me, it was either going to be the worst loss ever. I don't want to watch it. 
Like I'd rather just look at the phone when I woke up, check the score. And that's what I did. Then I saw the highlights and put the game, you know, I pieced it back together. That goes back to our theory. Coaches don't win games, but they can lose games. That's inexcusable. Inexcusable. No way. Fireball, so everything. All that. Where did Brandon Staley before. go wrong? Was it tr- trying not to lose the game? Like he, he got oh. really frozen. Frozen. I learned that with the Saints. I'm telling you, I saw it that year we won the Super Bowl. I could tell, like, even when we played Arizona for the first game in the playoffs, I, that it was Kurt Warner. That game where we physically, I'm telling you, Tyler, we weren't quitting. There wasn't a play until that game was over. The offense, defense, special teams weren't going to stop until the Super Bowl. I just, I saw, I, like, I was around that. And that's that mentality you have to have. 27 nothing, you shouldn't even care. Get it to 42 nothing. Seriously, you, you've got to go into halftime. Get it to 42 nothing and get off the field. And I've seen, and that's just to me, is a soft mentality that they just played with disappointing fireable. I hope coach Payton goes there. I hope he coaches that quarterback. We're all going to benefit from watching that. I would never have expected that kind of coaching out of that kind of head coach and that kind of moment. I mean, Brandon I was Staley wrong. Yeah. To, to the other extreme. I mean, he, he, he goes for it probably a little too often and is yeah. aggressive a little too. And to just take your foot off the gas uh, and it really just snowballed. You know, they they pan the camera to him on the sideline, and he just looked like a deer in the headlights. He didn't know what was happening, how to stop it. It was inevitable. And Doug Peterson just, just took him to school. I mean, that call on fourth down to give ETN the ball wide, Let, ballsy. Let's talk about that. We I'm, we I'm a big, big fan of Doug Peterson. And the Trevor Lawrence thing, give him credit. Give him credit. That's that's fighting through a, <laughs> Trevor Peterman. He he was Trevor Peterman for the first half, yeah. and to think he could fight through that in a, in that type of game that says a lot about Trevor Lawrence. He has to play better too. That's inexcusable. That first half was inexcusable. Seriously, it was awful. Like I was thinking, I was like, man all this Jacksonville talk we've had all year. And I keep saying, you know, both of us, he's on the climb. He's on the climb. Then he has that last game of the season, terrible fourth quarter when they needed him. Then he comes out this week, terrible first half. And I said, like, wow, they, he has a long way to go. Like he has to mentally now get over a hurdle. Hey, he fought through it. Give him credit, but give Doug Peterson credit too. For that team believes in him. Chris Manhurts. Love song, seeing him in the starting lineup, Canisius. That's right. Coaching yeah. matters so much in this Coaching league. Coaching matters. Look Coaching at where Trevor Lawrence matters. was last year with Urban Meyer, and th- that team is just absolutely lost in no man's land. Just a, 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 a total disaster. disaster. The head coach is back in Ohio feeling up, you know, <laughs> co-eds, woman, young woman, young enough to be his daughter, and your team's going. It was catastrophic how bad. The state of affairs was in Jacksonville. And yet it just goes to show you you find a head coach who A is going to just bring like normalcy and competence, i.e. the Giants, you know, Joe Judge to Brian Dayball. But but on top of that, innovation and and just the ability as an offensive coach to just know what buttons to push. And so you have the normalcy and you have like so you're down twenty seven nothing, you're not gonna panic. Right, the, the wheels aren't going to come off. So you you have that. I mean, if Urban Meyer's the coach, and down twenty seven nothing. Maybe you don't even show up for the second half. Yeah, with Doug Peterson, you, you you stay calm. Like he has you ready for this moment. Yet on top of that, you've got to go out there and move the ball and score touchdowns. And they, the 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 play calling was brilliant. Trevor Lawrence was brilliant. Evan Ingram, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk. All these guys that people people laughed in their face when they signed these guys made play after play after play, and then Travis Etienne off of what was it a Liz Frank injury? I mean, brutal injury last year, I and mean, his speed on that play. I don't know. I, I'm going to say they're they're going to make Kansas City sweat. That's the way I worded it. 
I, it's not going to be a blowout. I think they'll – that yeah. speed, that team speed they have is going to be a problem for every team that they face. I think Kansas City wins at Arrowhead. But they played them tough at Arrowhead, right? Like they're they're not going to be. I'm with you on this. Of the moment. I think this is going to be a good. Yep, I'm with you. Kansas City. I think it's a competitive it. game. Yep. Which is crazy. A year ago, who would think that they'd be playing playoff games against Kansas City in Kansas City against Patrick Mahomes, the league MVP, and you you'd have a team and a culture and a system and an offense that can threaten that. Um, all these teams going through the coaching cycle right now. I mean. You bet, you better get that higher right because it can go a long way. Coaching matters. It, it really it's crazy to think. Um, give Trevor Lawrence a ton of credit. He's never said a bad word about Urban Meyer. Yeah, I give him a lot of credit for that. That was so bad what they did to Trevor Lawrence last year. I remember talking to C.J. Beathard, you know, his backup quarterback, who's he's. All, I mean, they're really all. close, and he just I mean, if. If like mannerisms and body language and could, could talk, he said plenty when I asked him about Urban Meyer. It was like, holy is my words, holy shit. People don't have a clue how bad it was around here. No, but we Trevor don't. Lawrence we probably did, I mean, we flinch. don't. In a weird way, maybe that was like the best thing that could have happened to him over the mm-hmm. long term to go through something yeah. like that as a rookie. Right. Get him out as long as they got you know. But yeah, and then Doug Peterson to have to do this again. It tells you that players buy into him. Like we've talked about it, but that's two franchises now yeah. that he's made better. Yeah. And and Chiefs. And I even I'm sitting there sit I'm sitting there saying you can't win with a backup quarterback. Philadelphia did it with Nick Foles. Doug Peterson. And here we are looking at Brock Purdy. It can be done. Coaching and a loaded team helps. The system matters too. I, we've the system always matters. Frowned upon that term, system quarterback, but we shouldn't frown upon it. Like you want a really good system, and look at the New York Giants and that system and that quarterback. I know we're not getting to the NFC on this episode quite yet, but Brock Purdy awesome. in San Francisco, Daniel Jones in New York matters. The system can. Can go matters, such a matters. way. Um, and I, whatever it's, it's we want to say about whatever we want to say about Buffalo, and not that um, Dorsey's not doing a great job or whatever, it doesn't look like a machine. We could just leave it at that. You know, it, it doesn't look like a machine with Dable. I, I I would say I could use that word for the way that Giants team looked against Minnesota. That looked like an offensive machine. So, and it's setting things up, knowing what play is going to set up another play. He's a really, that he's a really drive. Maybe the next drive, maybe the drive after that. It's it's two, it's two places. Uh, I'm sold. When you go to do two different places and and have this result, Dable can coach. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our AFC podcast. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves with the Chiefs, but I know you like the Chiefs in a potential AFC championship game. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there Let's eventually. Get one. one game at a time, as they say. Bill's Chiefs, though. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll uh, catch you in the next episode.